Matthew and Luke record the story of the birth of Christ. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, we've been reading and meditating on the life of young Mary. Here in Luke, chapter 1, this morning, on my morning prayer walk, I was reading and pondering about how Elizabeth and Mary got together. Beautiful story. At the end of their conversation, Elizabeth says to Mary, you are favored by God. You are truly blessed. And the amazing response of Mary has become what we now call Mary's song. More than 100 popular Christian artists have recorded in their own rendition these scripture verses. Mary's song. When I ponder what makes a song so special, popular, so successful, I come to the conclusion of two factors. Number one, the heart and soul of the writer, the very spirit. And secondly, the subject that they're going to write a song about. These two dynamics are both found in Mary's song. The subject, greatness of God, Jesus, our Savior, and that factor of her emotions, her spirit, her soul. She pours it out in this brief song we call Mary's song. She is celebrating God's greatness in response to Elizabeth saying, Mary, you are truly blessed. My soul praises the Lord, she says. My spirit rejoices in God, God my Savior. This simple song has ten theological declarations made by this young virgin. The one that is going to conceived by the Holy Spirit and give birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. In her song, she gives to us six fundamental doctrines on who Jesus is. God, my Savior. She says, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. She speaks and writes about God's favor and blessing. She speaks about God's greatness, for the mighty one is holy, and he does great things for me. She speaks about God's mercy. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all that fear him. She speaks about God's mighty strength. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. She speaks about God's holy justice. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. She speaks about God's sovereign power. He has brought down the princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. She speaks about God's faithful provision. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. She speaks about God's protection. He has helped his servant Israel and he is remembered to be merciful. And finally, in this passage of scripture found in Luke chapter 1, verse 46, she speaks and concludes Mary's song about God's eternal promise. He made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. I challenge you this morning to read through, outline these 10 declarations about who God is, beginning with God is my Savior. As I was reading through this passage of Scripture 
On my prayer walk this morning, I wrote these words in my prayer journal. Mary's song expresses her profound spirit of humility, her heart's deep devotion to God. In this magnificent, she expresses deep gratitude, acknowledging God's greatness and demonstrating her willingness to serve while trusting his plan. Father God, we bow our heart and we pray the words from Mary's song. God, that we will trust you. You are a great God. You are a sir, sovereign God. You protect us. You provide for us. And we want to be found like Mary, willing, willing to serve, willing to trust in your eternal promises. Bless your word to our heart today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You be blessed this morning as you share together reading the Nativity song with a focus on Mary's song and pray it, pray it from your soul and from your spirit.